Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, well, uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, my name is Miguel, as he said. I, I work at Igalia, and I am here to present you uh, WPE, which is uh, the uh, browser we developed uh, targeted for embedded devices. Uh, the first thing to explain is what's the meaning of WPE because there is kind of uh, uh, ambiguous. So there are two things that are called WPE. So WPE first stands for a Web Platform for Embedded. Uh, this is a platform we have um, developed together with Metrological uh, that allows basically to, to show, to display web contents on an embedded device. Uh, the, it is hosted on GitHub. Uh, most of the components are open source. Uh, and many of them are planned to be as well. Basically, what you can find there is uh, uh, some Jocto recipes to, bu to build the, this platform for several hardware, uh, together with a build root clone. Uh, it's a matter of taste whether you want to use build root or Jocto here. Uh, the, we have there the WP framework, which is basically a service launcher that is able to launch several services. Among them, it, uh, it's the web browser. Uh, it's able to launch as well the, the, a compositor, a Wayland-based compositor that allows you to have several windows uh, being shown on the display. Uh, and uh, there are others or another uh, services that you can launch that uh, as uh, TV control service, uh, Netflix application, and several others. Uh, then we also have a, an, an application development framework uh, to develop WGL-based applications that can run in this platform. Also, we have a testing framework, and there are also another components that are not that relevant at this point, but it, it, it's, pretty, it's a pretty complex platform. Uh, keep in mind this uh, WP WebKit browser, because that's what we are going to talk about. And now I'm going to explain the second meaning of WP. So uh, WP is also, it also stands for WebKit for Embedded, which is basically the name of the, of the browser out of this uh, web platform for embedded, because it, it's not only in that platform, it's a, a single tone browser per se. So it's an official WebKit port. Uh, it is stored in the official WebKit repository, uh, which we call uh, the AppStream repository. And then inside this web platform for embedded, we have a, a clone, a Git clone, uh, containing the, the code together with some concrete uh, patches that are needed for uh, uh, embedded devices. So, uh, I was here uh, like uh, four years ago, and I realized that uh, most of the set-top boxes uh, on several smart TVs that were Linux-based were using uh, Qt WebKit as their port for web browsing. There is a problem because uh, Qt WebKit is not a WebKit port, an official WebKit port anymore. It's not being maintained since years ago. So there are uh, thousands of patches that are missing there, Th thousands of security problems that could happen. Uh, the natural step uh, after having Qt WebKit would be to switch to Qt Web Engine because uh, uh, they dropped a WebKit uh, and they decided to adopt Blink as the, their rendering engine. But the problem with that is that Qt Web Engine uh, changed the license to LGPLv3, which means that you need to provide the code for every component that runs together with this browser, which is a problem for several uh, hardware product productors. So it doesn't seem to be uh, an option to keep uh, Qt WebKit or switch to, to Qt Web Engine. So we, we decided that we needed uh, a new browser, Linux-based, Linux, -based, Linux uh, WebKit-based browser, that uh, should be able to, to run fast in low-end devices with a minimal set of dependencies. And initially, we targeted it to, to a single view, uh, full screen content. Uh, that's that's going being improved now, but that was our initial scope. So we have uh, this browser, web, WebKit Base, which supports more, most of the common HTML5 features. We have like around 400, score, uh, 400 points to score in htmltest.com. Uh, uh, we support WebGL, uh, accelerated canvas, also through OpenGL. Uh, we support CSS 3D transformations, uh, also hardware accelerated. Uh, also, um, video playback uh, with hardware acceleration. And uh, there are new features and new APIs uh, being added each day. 
we have a really small set of dependencies, which was one of the requirements of the, of the browser. Uh, we, we have some uh, small and very common Linux, uh, geni uh, geni uh, Linux libraries, like Harvest for text, ren uh, text rendering, Geno uh, TLS uh, for encryption and security, Pixman for uh, handling uh, graphics, Cairo for, uh, for graphics rendering. Uh, but the, the two key um, dependencies we have is GStreamer for media playback, and then a DLS uh, 2.0 implementation uh, uh, the, in order to, to achieve this hardware accelerator rendering. And uh, all of these together uh, creates a, well, the Raspberry Pi uh, is our reference board, is that what we use as a reference board. And uh, all, both the browser, the platform, or the whole platform uh, is uh, around 40 megabytes uh, complete, uh, the, the complete image. So it's pretty small. Uh, the browser, uh, some characteristics of the browser, it's multi-process and multi-threaded. Currently, we are uh, creating four processes for each browser. Uh, the UI process that, handle, that displays the content, the web process that processes the JavaScript and performs the composition of the contents, a network process to handle the network requ the requests, and then a storage process to handle the, the, storage of, uh, the database storage for data. And also inside each of the processes, we have uh, intensive threading for several tasks, we mean, which means that uh, it will take advantage of multi-core environments. Uh, so we are targeting low-end uh, low devices because we know that uh, especially set-top boxes have a uh, quite uh, slow hardware. Uh, uh, we are uh, facing this in two fronts. Basically, we, we want to use uh, the smallest amount of memory possible. Uh, and we have a system to define limits all, always inside a reasonable uh, limit. Uh, but we can more or less tweak the memory amount that we need to use depending on the platform. Uh, and also, it's a pretty lightweight. We are able to play YouTube TV with MSC on a Raspberry Pi Zero or Raspberry Pi One, which is single core ARMv6. Uh, we are using the GPU to, to display the video. But uh, keep in mind that the Raspberry Pi Zero or One has a capability of around 1,000 MIPS, which is pretty low. Uh, we usually work on the Raspberry Pi 2, which is around 8,000 DMIPS. Uh, it's what we use the most, but we are able to run in a uh, Raspberry Pi 1. So uh, the, we designed the browser uh, so it is uh, easily adaptable to new platforms to, add, uh, to be run on new hardware. Uh, the first thing we need uh, in order to uh, put this in, into a new hardware is uh, the appropriate GSTreamer plugins to perform the media playback. Uh, and these appropriate uh, plugins means uh, a plugin to handle hardware decoding, uh, which is really important because, for example, the Raspberry Pi has a hardware decoded for MP4 streams, and uh, we need to be able to use that if we want to achieve a good performance. Uh, in the case, for example, of uh, a typical Broadcom set of box, they usually provide as well a hardware decoder, and they also provide a, a GStreamer plugin to handle that hardware decoder. And the, the other thing that we need um, in order to put this browser in a, into a platform I, is to adapt the um, graphical uh, stack. What we did here is that created an, uh, we created an abstraction of the uh, graphical backend, which means that uh, each platform has its own graphical backend, which basically defines how graphical buffers are created, are shared between processes, and then how they are displayed uh, to the screen. So implementing this very small set of uh, classes, uh, we will have the browser running in a new platform. Uh, this, for example, we have uh, graphical backends for the Raspberry Pi uh, using the, uh, this, the display manager that it has, which is this man X. Uh, we have a, a graphical backend for the Broadcom Nexus platform, and we have also a graphical, a graphical backend for Wayland. Then, we support uh, hardware accelerator decoding when there are plugins available for, uh, for GStreamer. And we also support hardware accelerated video rendering. So the video frames are directly rendered into textures, and those are taken to the display, which is pretty fast, and it's zero copy. Uh, it's really very efficient. Uh, and we also support external rendering when required. What does this mean? Uh, there are some platforms where uh, the displaying the video, the video frames to the, to the screen needs to be done by an external element uh, uh, 
well, I, I'm software company external to the browser. So we, you need to send the, the frames to it, and it will show them. So we support this as well. We handle the, the, the coding, we handle the audio playback, but we uh, send the frames to an external platform that is able to render them. Uh, we support the last, the, the latest specification of the MSC, well, the, late, the latest version of the MSC specification. Uh, we have support for MP4, and we are now adding the, the support for WebM. Uh, and we have the 2016 uh, YouTube Limbach perform, uh, conformance te uh, certification. And we are now working on the 2018 uh, certification, which we hope we, we will pass. In, in not much time. And uh, we also support uh, EME. We have already implemented uh, B1 support for clear key and play ready, and that's already working. And we are currently working on any support for uh, EME version 3, uh, both with uh, we have clear key already uh, there. And we are using OpenCDM to add support for both uh, play ready and white bind. So uh, we are also adding support for WebRTC. We initially decided to use OpenWebRTC to, to do this. Uh, but in the end, it decided not to be the best option. We had a prototype. But uh, in the end, we decided together with Apple uh, to use Libre, uh, uh, LibWebRTC, uh, which is, as you know, this uh, library provided by Google. Uh, and now we are in the process of integrating it into WebKit. Um, and uh, let's hope it, it will be available soon. And then uh, regarding releasing, uh, we are releasing uh, uh, source star bars of the browser uh, from the AppStream repository every six weeks for everyone who, who wants to try it. And then uh, we do periodical merges of the codes uh, of the changes upstream into the, the downstream repository. So we always keep it uh, kind of updated. And we are uh, currently defining a, a policy for releasing uh, stable branches and the stable releases and also uh, latest uh, updated releases. And I guess uh, that's all from, from my presentation. Is there any question?